<clears throat> a little poke. I lightly poke her cheek, which garners no response. Huh. You make this hard for me, eh? Or you'll make this hard for me, eh? You cute little thing. Fine. I slightly pinch her cheek, and when she doesn't budge, I start to tug. Once I do that, she twitches, and I understand it as a signal to retreat from her bedside. Morning. Or moving swiftly, I return to my desk and pick up my book so that I can pretend I was reading. I mean, I was reading around 20 minutes ago, but... Ah, she's gotten up. Hmm, what, what, what time is it? Well, look who's decided to wake up. Late. You've been sleeping since 10 last night. Wow, I actually feel like I've been... Sleeping... Her sentence transformed into a mumbled mess, and she begins to nod. Come on, Winter. You're doing so well. We still need to eat breakfast. Or, well, lunch at this point. My bad. Breakfast. She drops back down to her bed and I can feel her gaze in my back. Sorry, I slipped past the din eye. Oh man, don't apologize to me. I could have easily woken you up. Well, yeah, it's lunch now. Which is what I meant to say. Anyway, when you do, when do you want to eat? Right now? I'll help. Oh, I'm honestly too feeling to actually get up, let alone stand up or walk or eat. I... I see. How are you, Waverly? Fine, you. Ooh. Waverly, please pay attention. Well, your mind seems alright. Oh, trust me, it's not. It feels so slow. But you're practically equipping just now. Good stuff. I hear her turn over. Don't tell me you're just going to... You're just going to go back to sleep in one second. Okay, telemarketers, yay. Really? Don't tell me you're just going to go back to sleep. No. Then what are you doing getting comfy? Am I not allowed comfort in my own room? You're going to fall asleep. No, I won't. Hmm, that response was measure slower. I don't think you're telling the truth. I won't, Waverly. Oh, maybe I should read you some lines out of this book that keep your attention. Waverly, please. Don't. I turn to an old page. Ahem. Eleanor pressed her silver-tipped finger against his skin and hissed a single question. Andrew groans loudly and mumbles something I can't hear. Did you see Astro walking along the parapet, or didn't you? Martin's breath was still, and he turned his eyes from hers. Thoughts of his demon lover were still fresh in his mind, and Asta's breath, Asta's taste, Asta's touch, ah, her touch. Whatever his heart had been courted or commanded, it mattered not, he felt for Asta. Even enough that he could never betray her. I hear a winter turn over again. Spare me. He's about to sleep with Eleanor, though, despite all this crap about Asta, don't you want, want to know how that plays out? No, she coughs. No, please stop. Kiko, why are you reading that tr that triple? You're reading inward fantasy fiction, and you belittle my taste? I like reading inward fantasy because it's fun, so, hmm. These books are fun, too, but fun because they're terrible. You see, Winter... I enjoy these works because I can appreciate their silliness. I don't think they're actually good. Then you think they're awful and revel on that? Yep, authors from our world are all very good at what they do, naturally, so it's nice to read some trashy nonsense for a change. You're making fun of other worlds. Yeah, who cares? I don't know. That's for real. Ah, I might be handling this with the sensitivity of a jackhammer. Um, not that, uh, oh man, what am I supposed to say? Not that I mean to imply, Waverly, it's fine. I don't mean to sound like that bothers me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Winter. Winter Harrison's place. Oh, come on, you're kidding. We'll pick this up in a bit. I rise from my seat. You're coming. I walk over to the door, hoping that this will be over with quickly so that I can return and clear the air. Opening it, I'm a bit taken aback to find a teacher and my first mentor. 
Henry Penn and Walter L. Why are they together? Come to think of it, have they always worn clothes so alike? They're looking like perfect, fashionable gentlemen. Are you quite all right, Waverly? Oh, y yes. Hello, sirs. Can I help you? Waverly, how nice to see you again. I hope you're doing. You've been well. I raise my shoulders a bit because I'm not sure how to answer. Oh, Walter, this student was your prodigy? Walter nods happily. Was her first, I believe, and I'm sure it was an honor. An honor? Yeah. I cover my mouth. Having spoken what I was thinking, I am really in a mess today. <laughs> she kids, a regular miniature me. Well, I hope not. I see. Ha, how rude of me. My apologies, Mr. Sire. I did not greet you. He gives a halfway bow. Greetings, how are you doing today? Decent. I blink once and hurry out an honorific. Uh, sir? That is good to hear. Can I help you? My roommate is sick and I was taking care of her, so... He's got me loose already. Oh, of course. Might you give Mistress Harrison this letter and tell her to expect a meeting with me sometime later? I take the envelope that he offers me, not bothering to look it over. Winter Harrison, eh? That poor girl witnessed the end of a world. Correct. And what's worse, she witnessed Cyrus mediating. Walter. It sounds like he had... Was 200% Cyrus yesterday out and out stupid. Walter smiles toothly and looks me in the eye, which is weird, but Walter, which is weird, but Walter behavior. It's hard not to laugh at his flippant, flippant, foolish actions. I only don't because, unlike him, I am solemn about these matters. But Cyrus, he was truly exceeding the limits of being an ass. He is, in fact, such a large ass that he puts the centerlands to shame. And ah, what's this? Walter and Hand look to the right, my right, and I peek past the door frame to see what's drawn their attention. Speak of the devil, and he doth appear. Mr. Cyrus Addington. I don't know why I'm trying to do like a British accent style thing for these guys. Walter speaks like he's presenting a circus act, complete with showy hand motions and everything. He's right, there, Cyrus, looking a little paler than normal. Liberans, I see that you're still attached to Penn's hip. That's a nice joke, Cyrus. You've always been good at jokes. Though I suppose that's no surprise, seeing as you're a pretty grand joke of your all your own. Out of corner of my, my eye, I see Walter sneering. I haven't had the opportunity to ask. Are you properly ashamed of yourself, or am I to take your overbearing silence recently to be your standard brooding and angus? I'm not here to mince words with you, Walter, Mr. Penn. Are you finished here? If so, then I ask that you leave while I speak with my prodigy. Henry, who didn't bother to say anything between these two, speaks up. As a matter of fact, my business is done. I should let you know, though, Cyrus, that your prodigy is still infirm. He nods blithely at me, indicating to Cyrus my, pres my presence. We were instead speaking to the young Mistress Irie. She will do. Eh? In that case, Waverly, we will be departing now. Henry puts his hands, his hand on my shoulder and bends to whisper at my ear. You know where to find me if you need me, I hope. I understand if recent events have been difficult for you to comprehend. I nod, giving my shoulder a rub as he lets me go and stands up straight. Alright, Walter, quit. Quit sticking your tongue out at him. You're being childish. Come now, we're leaving. Right, right. Goodbye, Waverly. Yes, goodbye, Waverly. Henry and Walter walk towards Cyrus, and while the elder mentor continues past him, the younger stops at Cyrus' side. I strain my ears to listen. I really am fucking disappointed in you. I don't know what you're thinking, but you need to take this job seriously. You asked to be a mentor. Now start acting like one. You're not working alone anymore. After this, Cyrus answers. But I can't hear what he says. Walter grabs him by the shoulder and snarls, whispering something else. Cyrus refuses to look at him and Walter scoffs, shoving Cyrus out of his way and catching up with Henry. Leaving Cyrus to just stand there with his head down. Man, they're so weird. Adults are so weird. After a few moments of nothing, he walks over to the door, his gaze still fixed to the ground. Hello, Waverly. Hey. You awkward, creepy bastard. I, uh, I'm not. He finally looks me in the eyes. I'm not entirely sure what to say. You and me both. 
I just know that I haven't properly apologized. Not that this is pro properly apologizing, having a student relay the message for me. It's immature, but I imagine I can't talk to Winter herself right now. I say nothing because that's, there's nothing polite to say. I want you to tell Winter that I'm sorry. I want you to tell her that, that absolutely nothing that happened was her fault. I suppose that's all I want to say that can pass through you. The blame's wholly mine, and I want her to know that. She did nothing wrong. I can see that he wants to explain himself more, but it's hurting him to try. I... er... better speak up. Sir, I'll tell her. Can I ask you something, sir? I heard you killed the leader, and that something bad happened because of that. Wasn't that, uh, well, a dumb idea? Did you think that wouldn't happen? Cyrus doesn't answer for long enough that I think he's not going to answer, but he speaks before I can say never mind. I, listen, this is something difficult for students such as yourself to understand, but I knew full well that it, full well it would happen. What? Listen, why on earth should I? It's something that you eventually must understand. The situation was a quagmire. Many of the options available to us could have been very likely made thing or eh. the situation was a quagmire. Many of the options available to us could have very likely made things turn out worse than worse rather than better. You'll have to believe me that in this case, the best course of action to promote order was to allow that something bad to happen. I'll have to hear what Winter says because that sounds like nonsense. The larger issue was that I underestimated the consequences. To put it bluntly, I did not properly research, I was overconfident. So, that is, the system we had visited was a very chaotic world, although inconsistently. Its heptic discovery happened both quickly and suddenly there. Large leaps in technological prowess were spurred by random discovery. It was a very unusual system, and I knew that, but I didn't give it proper consideration. I had expected some losses from my actions, but I but certainly did eh, but certainly not the loss of the entire world. In short, I misjudged and rushed things. You know how I rush things. Don't smile at me, you fiend. You can't just tell me you allowed the world to die and expect me to smile back. Yeah, I know you're calling on these rumors about yourself being a grimly logical murder happy bastard, but it's not really funny knowing that's true and what it entails. Well, unless you have any more questions. What did Walter mean when he said you asked to be a mentor? What am I doing? Waverly, you get? Where do you get off talking like a pal of the superior and asking such personal questions? You weren't even supposed to hear that. Heavens, are ye a buffoon? Far more than he knew when he's or far more than he knew when he said it. However, I don't think that's a matter to discuss with you kids. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. Is that all? Uh, yeah. Then, thank you for listening to me, Waverly. Again, I'm sorry to put this responsibility onto you, but I would really appreciate it if you could do this for me. I will. I will. Don't worry. He chuckles. You've certainly opened up a lot more Waverly, this. Heh. <laughs> this is making it seem like I made a fine decision to be my mentor. I get to watch you guys grow up. I may have forgotten what it means to grow up. By the way, you shouldn't eavesdrop. Considering it, I decide to smile. Don't talk about private matters in public then, sir. <laughs> I'll try not to. Then I'll be leaving, Waverly. Peace to you. I and to you. He nods to me and walks away. I shut the door. I'm not sure what my opinion of Cyrus is now. Maybe it's worse. I shudder to think it's any better, but, well, I guess he... Uh, this isn't something I can work out right now. Yo, Winter. What? You're very popular today. We've had a total of three visitors come for you. Or was it technically four? Ah, whatever. What can I say? I'm very charming. Well, Mr. Charming, I have a letter for you. 
I walk over to her bedside to hand over the thing. Before I do, though, I decide I should have a look at what the envelope says. For whatever reason, it's too much to bear read. For what? For whenever it's too much to bear read, it's Henry Penn. Huh. Well, here you are. I toss it down next to her pillow where she reads it sideways. From Mr. Penn. Hmm. Yep. And um, also, I'm sorry about kind of talking dismissively about worlds. I told you that I didn't really mind. I'm still sorry, and I don't really... I shouldn't have been talking that way anyway. You really don't need to apologize, Waverly. Cyrus is also sorry. Winter falls. Hey, come on. Just listen to what he had to say. I'm listening. He's sorry, and he wants you to know that it's not your fault. It's his. He doesn't want you to blame yourself. He knows he fucked up, Winter. Even if he's a jerk, you should forgive him for yourself. It's not that simple, Waverly. You didn't hear me yesterday. He most certainly does not feel bad about what he did. Or you didn't hear him yesterday. He most certainly doesn't does not feel bad about what he did. He just may feel bad about letting me see it. I mean, even if I wasn't concerned about his motivations, he still treated me awfully and made me and made me watch him kill a person. Furthermore, even if he had succeeded, Lillian still would have died. Pardon my language, but screw Cyrus Addington. A dark feeling grows in my belly. I push it down, and nothing good comes from harboring bad will. I can't pretend I know what it's like, Winter. But I know that just feeling shit about things isn't going to help you. I swallow. And I hate to say it, but you're probably going to see a lot more of people killing people in this line of work. We also both know that we may end up killing a few or several ourselves, but nobody wants to acknowledge that. I let out a sigh. This is depressing talk. It's best if we move on. Oh, whatever then. Whatever. I think we've delayed you eating for long enough. Any longer and you could end up missing your debriefing. Ah, shoot, you're right. That's the day. I completely forgot about it. Yeah, so come on. I reach down and she lifts herself up to receive me. She holds on to my arms with a trembling lack of strength. Alright, that's it. I ease her out of bed as carefully as I can, and she's soon on her feet. Able to stand alright. Able to stand not quite alright. Oh, that's clear from how she's swaying a little. Don't try to do this on your own then, Winter. We've got, or you've got my shoulder right here. Yes, thank you. She presses all of her negligible weight into me and I stand firm. We walk to the door, prepared to leave. Prepared to go on, I should think. Congratulations, completing the game. You may now save your profile. Saving profiles allow future episodes of a dysfunctional system to, to remember your choices. Be sure to give your profile a descriptive name so you can recognize them later. Note: multiple profiles may share the same name. Name this profile. I guess we'll name this, um, LP Bad. Because if you ask me, that wasn't exactly a great ending. At least, well, I mean, it could have technically gone slightly better, I'm sure. So, yes, as I had said at the beginning of this session, and actually, I guess, about three quarters of the way through also, um, they have started a Kickstarter to have a second and third episodes. If you were able to go and spare at least ten dollars, that would be great. But of course, you do not have to. That's the thing. You are by no means whatsoever forced to actually do that. Is there a single one here I can actually use for something reasonable? Actually, some of these are quite interesting. Let's go and look at some of them. Because, yeah, we've got the time to do so. We may go and use that one there. I don't know. Gotta have to think about it. But yes, so they've got a Kickstarter for a second and third episode. If you can spare at least $10, please, 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 I beg of you, do so. But of course, you're not forced to. That one seems to have just a lot of stuff. 
little bit. But yeah, so if you are capable of going and pledging at least ten dollars, I'd be fine with that. And that would be honestly, at least in my opinion, great because I would honestly love personally to see how they manage to wrap up the story for this. And I'm sure the people who watch this would also love to see how these are wrapped up. Now, of course, you can also go ahead and buy the first episode from either their website or from Steam, whichever one you would rather use. That's completely up to you. It honestly doesn't matter to me either way when it really comes down to it. But you could also go and do that, and that may not really contribute a whole lot to helping ensure we get a second episode, but it could potentially, but who knows. So those are actually sort of interesting. So I think I'm going to just go and use this one for what I want. And that one should work perfectly fine for what I need. But yes, so go ahead and pledge some money if you possibly can. Oh. Actually, yeah, skip that. Thank you. I didn't actually want to go and check that out. So yes, if you can pledge some money, please do so. That'd be great. I'd love it. If you could, I personally plan to go and pledge some myself. Like I said, I plan to possibly pledge like $50. And if you're able to pledge at least 10, that's great, but of course, you don't have to pledge really anything at all. But I would just love it if you could pledge at least 10. So I'm just going to go ahead and end the video right here, because there's really no reason for me to keep it going beyond this point. So, see you in the second episode, hopefully. Hopefully, keyword there. And we shall see what happens.